Welcome to Lecture 8 of Biology 115, entitled Respiration. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at respiration, and particularly cell respiration, uh, and focusing really on the main points, the main ideas, and the main mechanisms behind this really intricate, really complex, but really, really important process that happens in all of our cells. We're going to begin this first flowchart and entitle it Respiration Overview just so that we get a sense of what we're talking about before we get into um, the more specific details of the process. Respiration in and of itself, we can consider it a catabolic uh, reaction or a set that, of reactions that eventually um, classify as catabolic in nature. These catabolic reactions, if we remember, are reactions that are going to be uh, releasing or releases stored energy. That's the idea behind catabolism. It's the breakdown, whereas anabolism or anabolism is the build up. We always think anabolic steroids gives you strong muscles, you build muscles. Well, catabolism is the opposite, where we release stored energy because we're breaking bonds and we're causing many different chemical reactions to occur that end in this overall, uh, let's say, theme of release of energy. In addition, specifically for respiration, this catabolic sort of mechanism occurs when we have electron transfer. So we'll write E minus transfer, that just stands for electron transfer. And specifically, electron transfer itself plays a major role. So we'll write plays a major role in pathways. If we remember, metabolism has many, many different pathways from our metabolism lecture. Pathways that include the resulting sort of chemical reactions, whether they're catabolic or anabolic, that eventually end in a certain product or certain products. And that's what molecular pathways are all about. Respiration itself is a molecular pathway that focuses on this, electron transfer. And specifically, we can state that this focus of electron transfer is utilized or sort of exemplified when we see the electron moving. When electron moves, we'll say, that's when this happens. That's when energy is released. And this is a sort of a key fact to keep in mind that this is the exact the exemplification, let's say, of this fact of electron transfer. Um, this is a key fact that we should keep in mind as we continue along with this lecture because this is going to be a theme that's going to pop up over and over and over again. Everything about the respiration process of cell respiration is going to prove that this is true. It's going to prove that it is a catabolic reaction in every way, shape, and form. Next, we want to look at respiration, but specifically this idea of oxidation reduction reactions. And we'll write that down on the side over here. Oxidation reduction reactions. We've hinted upon these words in previous lectures, but now we're going to really put some definitions to the meaning of oxidation and reduction and really how they relate to each other. Another way this is often referred to, this idea of oxidation reduction, um, is more simply, uh, and I like this a little better, uh, redox reactions. Easier to say means the same exact thing because this is just reduction, R-E-D, oxidation reactions. Just a little easier way to say it. So we'll from this point forward, we call them redox reactions. So redox reactions, what is the overall result? What, are the, what is this cause to happen? And how does it relate to cell respiration? So let's see. The result, we can state, is the movement of electrons. And again, here's that theme. We said that the electron transfer is going to happen, and the electrons are going to move. This is the whole process of it happening right here in these redox reactions that are going to be a part of respiration. So we're going to have movement of electrons, and we'll say away from one atom, from one atom, and towards another. Specifically, what we're saying is that we're having a electron transfer process happening. This is sort of a summary sentence that explains both of these points in the realm of oxidation reduction. Oxidation reduction, or redox, is the idea of an electron moving away from one atom and towards another. That is the reason, and that is the result, because of the terms themselves. And we'll look at some of these terms so that we can sort of understand this result in even better detail. 
So there are some terms that you must absolutely know and be comfortable with because we're going to be utilizing them throughout the course of this lecture. Respiration is going to be full of these terms and we have to be very comfortable with them. The first term that we're going to look at is oxidation. Oxidation we're going to define as simply the loss of electrons. So if we go back to our result definition, movement of electrons away from one atom. So that is oxidation because something is moving away from one atom. It's the loss of electrons from one atom. So that's our idea of oxidation. So then contrastingly, we would say that reduction is what? Reduction instead is now considered the gain of electrons. So we'll write gain of electrons. Back to our result definition, movement of electrons away from one atom and towards another. That's the reduction term, the, re the redox part, uh, or the reduction part of redox. So this is the gain of electrons. It's called reduction simply because it's when you gain an electron, when you gain a negative charge, that simply means that you reduce your positive charge. That's why it's called reduction, reduction of positive charge. In addition, we can also look at um, the term redox in a little bit more detail. Redox itself can be considered the idea um, that an electron cannot, we utilize redox because an electron cannot exist in, let's say, a free state um, in living cells. This is a bad, bad, bad situation for any cell because this free-floating electron, let's just say, can cause havoc, can cause many different problems by being full of energy and having the ability to sort of throw off everything. So what we do is we make sure that when we have an electron, let's say, going through a process, it's either going to be lost or gained. Lost or gained. Never in the middle, never in this free state um, that this redox is sort of preventing. So we can say that redox, the term itself, is the idea that the electron can never ever exist in a free state. It can either be oxidated or, or it, can, it can either be part of oxidation or reduction, but never anything in the middle. We don't want it to be part of that. Another uh, term that we should understand is the idea of an oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent, and this always confused me a little bit, but we'll get through it. An oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. Anybody who uh, accepts electrons. So electron acceptors will say, these guys, and this is the confusing part, oxidizing agents, since they accept electrons, they get reduced. Because let's look back to what reduction means. Gain of electrons. Gain of electrons, if you accept, or let's say electron gainers, they are going to get reduced because this is the acceptance of electrons or the gain of electrons and we stated that reduction is the gain of electrons. So anybody who is an oxidizing agent gets reduced. And then contrastingly, we can look at a reducing agent, of course, and it's just the exact opposite. A reducing agent is the idea of an electron donor and these guys are going to get oxidized. Because once again, loss of electrons. If you donate an electron, you are going to be getting oxidized. You are then thus considered a reducing agent. So it's a little bit confusing, sort of an opposite naming convention sort of uh, nuance that we have here, but this is something that you have to be comfortable with and be able to explain because what's going to happen on the exams is that you're going to be asked which of the following molecules shows oxidation, which of the following molecules is an oxida oxidizing agent or a reducing agent, etc. So be very comfortable with these terms. Practice utilizing them, especially in the context of cell respiration. Um, another thing that we want to talk about in terms of uh, redox reactions is uh, hydrogen's role. I think it's very important and often very overlooked, um, the idea of what hydrogen is even doing in these reactions, because it's actually the key component. So we'll say hydrogen's role. When a molecule loses hydrogen, so let's say molecule loses H for hydrogen, that is the same thing as saying the molecule is oxidized. So we'll write that down. Molecule is, we'll say, ox. Because look, oxidation is a loss of electrons. And then, so we said molecule loses H, so molecule is oxidized for that reason. And then if we say molecule, whatever molecule we're looking at, 
gains H, what can we say about that? The molecule is reduced. Molecule is R-E-D, reduced. And this is these facts are both true because whenever you look at a hydrogen atom, right over here, a hydrogen atom is always one proton and also it carries with it one electron. And this is the key right here, this one electron, because that is what oxidation reduction is all about, the transfer of re electrons. Redox reactions are the movement of electrons away from one atom and towards another. If that molecule loses an H, that molecule is oxidized because it lost an electron right over here. If that molecule gains an H, it thus gained an electron and thus became reduced. So that's hydrogen's role. We're going to be looking at many different reactions and many different sort of consequences that result in these two overall, overall uh, let's say, endpoints, either being oxidized or being reduced based on your relationship to hydrogen. Did you lose a hydrogen or did you gain a hydrogen? From this point forward, whenever something loses a hydrogen, we say that it was oxidized. And whenever something gains a hydrogen, we say it is reduced or it was reduced. And our last point that we'll mention about redox reactions is the idea that electron movement, we've talked about this uh, pretty much in detail, but one more thing we want to say is that electron movement, which we've mentioned several times so far, is simply also going to result, and this is very important, in energy transfer. And what I mean specifically by this is that energy transfer to acceptor molecules. So if we look at the movement of an electron, specifically, let's say, uh, between these two uh, molecules, this molecule is known as NAD plus versus its other state, which we'll become very familiar with soon in the next couple of flowcharts, NADH. First thing I want you to notice is the difference between these. What do you notice? What is missing from this one and what does this one have? Of course, we're looking at an H here and no H there. We have a loss of electron here and we have a gain of an electron here because guess what? Like I said, when a molecule loses H, it's considered oxidized and when a molecule gains H, it's considered reduced. So let's put that into words in a little bit more detail by stating that NAD+, and this is a common reaction that's going to happen throughout respiration. This is why we're using it as our example of energy transfer. If we have NAD+, we can say that NAD+, will be reduced or oxidized. What do you think if I want to turn it into NADH? Of course, we're going to be gaining an H, so we gain an electron. So NAD+, will be reduced to what? Obviously, you're going to put another H on there, so now NADH. And if it's reduced to NADH, you know what we've done? In this sort of addition of a hydrogen molecule, we've created stored energy. We've created stored energy. And specifically, remember, respiration, the overall process is a catabolic reaction because it releases stored energy. When an electron moves, when an electron goes from one state to another, when it goes from one point, let's say from a random point, back to NAD and turns it into NADH, we've created stored energy. And that stored energy is exactly what we're going to be using for our overall goal of respiration. And what is that goal? What is the goal of respiration? We're going to take the stored energy that we're creating by moving electrons, by reducing and oxidizing, by undergoing redox reactions. The goal is to store energy so that we can obviously use it for ATP, there's that magic molecule, synthesis. ATP synthesis and cell respiration go hand in hand for this reason. Because redox reactions will end up in the movement of electrons, which is the transfer of energy to an acceptor molecule, creating stored energy, which will then be utilized to create ATP in many steps further down the line.